Want to see my favorite card projects of 2022? Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I am sharing a roundup of my top tape. Let's try that again. Today I am sharing my top 10 card projects for the past year and who knows, maybe some of them are yours. Maybe some of them aren't. Maybe there's some that should have made the list. Maybe you think my list should only be five long. I don't know. It's fun though, it's year end. It's the best I can do. So to see my top 10 list, stick around. That card compilation, the, the list coming up next. If you wanna see any of them not sped up and in full, I'll have everything linked in the description box if you wanna catch those videos on the replay. The first card on my list is a very simple design featuring some large greetings from me and these cool stamps from Tim Holtz. I love this stamp set. I love the funkiness of the brush strokes. So I busted out some oxides and stamped three colors that I thought looked really cool together just to create a quick and funky background. Then I tapped on a little water for that cool oxide reaction made my greeting and sprinkled on a little gold powder. Designs like this are some of my favorites to do because you know, they're just what they are. And here I had a little glitch, right? So I took my little emboss it pen from Ranger and just colored in the part that didn't get stamped so well, added a little more powder and you never knew it was messed up from the start. I die cut out the greeting and then I decided, yeah, this is probably gonna look better as a horizontal card. I do mostly A2 portrait sizes, but this one looked better as a landscape. Finished with my favorite thing in the world, confetti style sequins for the boop factor. And we have the first card on the list. This reminds me, I need to use oxides more often. Card number two, I revisited one of the very first stamp sets I ever purchased back in 2017. And I thought, what would I do with it today, knowing what I know now, five, six, however many years later? And I realized I kind of did the exact same things. I got out my warm gray markers, which are always my go-to for basic coloring. And I kept everything so simple. But I do think my coloring has improved over the years. Not exponentially, but I've gotten a little more confident with Copic markers. And for this, I cut out all of my sweet little critters from this original old set that I purchased, and I just wanted to create a cute little scene. I took a stencil from Simon Says Stamp with some cute stars, blended on a little grounding background, and then used that as the base for the project. I stamped on my greeting just in black ink only, and I love this look. I popped up every single little critter and package and star balloon, and that was the overall design. And again, this is so simple, but compared to what I did back in the day, it's a little more stepped up, and I have to say, I loved how this turned out. It actually was one of my favorite projects of the year, and of course, I'm going to finish it up with the sequins. You've come a long way, baby. Moving on. Next up, card number three. And this is one of my go-tos for any time that I don't really know what I want to do. If I create a big stamped background and using red cling stamps is so perfect for this, I add on the Versamark and clear or white powder, and then I'm set up to do the classic emboss resist technique. Just blending on a beautiful rainbow of color and for this card, I used all positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp, which have quickly become my go-to inks for pretty much all of my ink blending. I love this look, and it's so easy to do, especially when you don't have an idea. Make a pretty background, trim it down, find some sort of greeting to pop on here. Here I just used a die cut that I designed, a very simple here for you. Stack it all up, Top those die cuts with a beautiful metallic gold or metallic silver cardstock, and you have a lovely greeting to pop onto a shadow layer and then pop up onto your card. I love this formula the ink blend, the emboss resist, a few confetti style sequins, and that pop 
greeting in the center. Love how that turned out. I do this technique a ton. Card four was all about pattern stamping. This stamp set that I designed for Simon Says Stamp was actually a really popular set and sold really well for me. And I had so much fun creating cards with it. One of the things I don't do enough of is just stamping my own patterns. You can take any element from any stamp set and just repeat it over the space. Move them, tilt them, make one upside down. And when you're done, you can create a beautiful pattern that you made one of a kind for your card project. Of course, this stamp set also has a two-step stamp aspect, and it's kind of fun to create that little offset outline of the elements in the set. I wasn't sure which greeting I wanted to use, and I do this quite often as well. If you're not sure, you know, it's just paper. Stamp more than one. And then the one that rises to the, the top, if you will, that's the one you're going to use. And I decided not to use either of them. Instead, I just went with sentiment strips. See, it, 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 you, know, you never know. You never know. You just got to keep going. Card number five, I love. Now, this was another stamp set that sold really well. I think a lot of people had fun with this witchy and witchy greetings stamp set. And all I did was create, again, another pretty background in the classic Halloween triadic scheme, right? Stamped down some witches, did some extras, because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. And look at how good that looks. Oh, love it. And then I took the die. This is a word and shadow die called Witch Please. Popped them up on a black base. And instead, I changed my mind. I went just with the black only. Popped on You're My Writer die. Added some really fun, shiny little sequins. These are kind of an iridescent that picked up the color underneath. And that was my favorite Halloween card of the year. Card number six featured this charming stamp set from Gina K Designs. And although, again, my coloring is very simple, this is probably my favorite colored project of the year. And I just feel like I kept it very simple. The snow people are super easy to color. Of course, I also had a couple little other elements with the tree and the light, but I ended up not using the tree. And here's the thing, when you're designing, just stamp it all out, you know? Stamp it all out because you don't know until you get there, right? You gotta, you gotta have the elements to play with, and that's, that's always how I create. But here, rather than go with all manner of colors, I just kept all the snowmen the same, right? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I think this monochromatic approach is actually really nice. Very simple. I added a little bit of shine to them with a glitter pen. But here, what I'm going to do is just take a similar colored ink, blend a little grounding background. Then I stamped a greeting on gray, trimmed it down with one of my favorite die sets, and added the little notch banner. I glued down the light post. I popped up the snowmen and a little liquid glue helped with a little wiggle room here. And then I lined up my greening and that was the finished card project. Of course, a little bit of shine on the buckles and the little flower. And I think that card turned out so cute. Card number seven is actually a twofer. And the funny thing is, I unearthed some supplies that I hadn't used in a while when I was setting up the new studio. And one of them was the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I haven't used these in ages. So I scribbled some out and created this sort of, I, I think it looked like a geode, right? I started with one idea, but my favorite card was the second idea that resulted. Here, I just picked everything up with water, swirled it around, kept it in some nice, clean, uh, coordinated, analogous colors, popped it into a 3D embossing folder, and then I was able to die cut that star out with the coordinating die. Then I needed some extra snowflake, right? So I cut that out and glued a few together and popped that up for the detail, but I added a little bit of color onto a background panel, right? And that was going to become the base 
for the other card. So this is, you know, doing two at once is not something I usually do. But here, added foam tape, I popped it up, I popped up the greeting, and I actually love the card on the left even more than the card on the right. So you can always look for opportunities to get a twofer out of a die, and well, that makes card making double the fun. Yeah, I think, I think that's what we go with. Love these two cards. Card number eight. This was one of my most viewed videos of the fall, and I'm not sure why. I, I, the title of the video literally says, you will not want to mass produce this, and if you watch the full length clip, you're gonna understand why. It is a very fussy video, right? The design is so simple, but one of the takeaways that I hope you get from some of my videos is that even a card that looks really simple, it might not actually be simple in the process, but I never mind because it's just more time to create. I love sitting in this space and coming up with design ideas. And so if something's a little fussy and it takes a longer time than perhaps expected, I always think of it as bonus crafting time and who can complain about that? Love how this turned out and I popped it onto a craft note card for a very joyful holiday card. Number nine, this was one of my most successfully foiled projects of the year. Now, if you've watched my channel, you know I struggle with the foiling. And believe me, I'm going to continue to struggle with foiling, but I love the results, so I keep trying. This was probably the first time in 2022 where I did a foiling project and it actually turned out so well. Now, sure, there's a little overfoiling here or there, but this stencil combo with these hot foil plates is so fun to play with. Layering stencils in general are a blast, right? Because you're just going to be able to lay down color in a way that would be almost impossible to do by hand, right? This stencil set is so cool. And when I finished with the blending and peeled away that panel, I just couldn't believe I had just done that. It just looks so good. I also used a hot foil plate for the greeting. And even though there was over foiling at the top, did not matter because I was die cutting. Then I trimmed that gorgeous panel down, popped it onto a note card, and I also added a few extra layers of cardstock underneath the thank you, the same shadow layer, and added, again, some confetti style sequins, but these were an iridescent and the foil was iridescent, so I thought that was a really good way to pick up and repeat the theme of the iridescent foil that I used. It was the best foiling project with the fewest mistakes. And finally, card 10. I knew when I was creating this card that it was very likely going to be my favorite card of the year. It has everything that I love, a simple, simple color palette, a little snow, some white die cuts that you stack together for dimension, and a very simple greeting. There's times when you're creating and you just know, you know when you're making something that it really does represent your favorite style of card. And this definitely is mine. I love clean and simple card designs. They are my favorite, even the ones that look simple but take forever to make. This card was not that. And also I learned something new by using my cardstock as the base for my color rather than try to ink blend the whole thing. And that's new for me. I've seen other wonderful card makers do it. I had just never tried it myself. And now I am so glad that I have that little technique in my toolbox. This design I could do 700 times over and I don't think I would ever get bored with it. A simple die cut, a simple greeting and a gorgeous color. And that really is my favorite card of 2022. The takeaway for me is this stuff is ridiculously fun. I still can't believe that I'm here on YouTube sharing all of this goodness and that you are here watching. I appreciate every single subscriber. I appreciate every comment and I can't wait to continue creating and sharing card goodness from my studio. I'll be sure to include all the links for these projects and the full-length videos below, 
so check those out in my YouTube description. Thanks so much for a great year here on YouTube.